Hey, praise the Lord, Brother Clinton here. It's another beautiful day in the neighborhood. Praise God. Um, it is the second day of the week, the 15th of February, the year of our Lord, 2016, 57, 76. And this message is to encourage those of you who are young in the faith, those of you who are seeking the Lord Jesus Christ in his word, and those of you who are discovering that the more you seek Jesus Christ in his word, the more the people that profess to be Christians set themselves against you. This is a principle that is written clearly in the scripture and repeatedly in the scripture, and it's something very difficult for us to understand at first, but when we get it, quote unquote, it's, it's a revelation that is clear and it sets forth the big picture in your mind and causes you to be at ease concerning the things that are happening around you, even though in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow, as it is written in the scripture in Ecclesiastes 118, I believe. I want to share with you a portion of a letter that was written to me from a disciple, um, a woman who is in love with the Lord Jesus Christ and who is experiencing these very same things. And I don't have her permission to share her name with you, so let's just call her Pam. That's not her name, but we're going to call her Pam uh, for the sake of not speaking her actual name. And this is so important that I just want you, those of you who are young in the Lord, those of you who are are older in the Lord. I want you to pray about this right now and ask the Lord to reveal to you the things that I'm about to speak to you because, you know, even as Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and are life. they are life. So is the case right now. And as I read this letter, I was just so filled with indignation in the spirit against, not against this sister, but against the people in this world who profess themselves to be Christians and how they damage the lives of others. In the denominations, they are, they are dead, and they are filled with dead bread, and they, they feed others with their dead bread. You know, It's written in the Revelation, the third chapter. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things hath, excuse me, these things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name that thou livest, and art dead. He said, I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest, and art dead. And how many times of those of us who know the Lord Jesus Christ, those of us who, who, who are in Jesus Christ, you know who you are. How many times have we seen these organizations called churches with a name on the door that proclaims that they have life, but they are dead? The name on the door proclaims that they have life. Living Streams Church, Living Waters Church, First Baptist Church of so-and-so, um, the, they all proclaim that they have the life of God. They all proclaim that they can give you a relationship with God. They all say that they have life and they are dead. And because they are dead, they desire to draw you into their death as well. That's what denominations are all about. You know, there's videos on this channel that talk about denominations. If you want to do a search for that, please do. A denomination is, a, is, a, is, is a, gr a group or organization of people who have rejected the name of Jesus Christ and named themselves with a lesser name. That's what the word denomination means. To denominate means to reject the name that you have and choose a lesser name, a less important name, a subordinate name. That's what denominate means. That's what a denomination is. It's a group of people who have chosen to reject the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and take a lesser name. And because of that, they have no life. They are dead. See, their name proclaims that they have life, but the only name that has life is Jesus Christ. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Having said that, let me share with you a portion of this sister's letter. She says, my husband and my Christian counselor. Now, let me stop right here and say that, uh, and I haven't mentioned this woman's actual name, so I'm going to go ahead and say this. Okay. This woman is in a relationship with a man who is her husband legally, according to the law of the state, but she is living in adultery, and she knows this, and she is set in her mind to remedy this situation, according to the Word of God. Okay, So this husband is not her first husband. She knows this, and she knows what she needs to do, and she's in the process of doing that. Having said that, my husband and my Christian counselor have agreed that it is really strange that all I want to do in my spare time, and then she puts in parentheses, I work a minimum of 50 hours a week, is read the Bible or read about other saints like the Puritans. They both believe I am a legalist. They have both told me that I read and read and read, not because I love the Lord, but because I want to gain the favor of the Lord by trying too hard to show works instead of trusting Him. Are you angry yet, Christians? You should be. Praise the Lord. The truth is that there is never conversation about the gospel in my house. 
My husband gets upset when I play worship songs at home. I have stopped playing worship songs when he is around. This was brought up in a counseling session and our counselor said, why do you feel you have to be sharing worship songs or asking for more prayer time or wanting to study the Bible with your husband if your own pastor doesn't do these things with his wife? Is your blood boiling yet, Christians? It ought to be. Oh, she says, I wanted to just run out of that room but kept all these things in my heart until I myself stopped going to receive counseling from this lady that just got her certificate from seminary. I know I have to pray for her like I want to pray for my husband, too. None of them have convinced me that I am doing too much in searching for the Lord, like a deer pants for water in a desert. This is a portion of a letter that this sister wrote to me today. What is a seminary? You know, I've spoken about that on this channel before. In fact, I have a video on this channel called What is a Seminary? And if we just look at the word, seminary, Okay, semen is a seed, okay, and, and the, the suffix airy de designates a place where seeding is done. A seminary is a Jesuit-owned organization, and if you don't know who the Jesuits are, look it up. Okay, there's, a, there's an epistle on the website, the Sword of the Valiant website, called Who Are the Jesuits? Okay, www.swordofthevalliant.com. You see it on every one of my videos. Go there, check it out. Don't just pass by these videos and see swordofthevalliant.com and never do anything about it. Go there, type it into your address bar. Go there and check it out. If you love the Word of God, it will bless you because it's messages from the Word of God to the people of God in these last days so that we can be established in the Word of God, rooted and grounded in the faith, speaking the truth in love, being of the same mind and of the same judgment, and ready for the Lord at His coming. Blessed be the name of the Lord. A seminary is a Jesuit-owned organization which is created, which was created and is ordained and run for the specific purpose of destroying the faith of Jesus Christ and cranking out pastors who are perverted with the dead bread that you see in the denominations, you see. The Jesuit colleges don't care what denomination you choose as long as you choose one, as long as you don't choose Jesus Christ, as long as you don't believe the Word of God, but instead believe the gobbledygook and the nonsense that they teach you in seminary so that you can be filled with death and go out and fill other people's with death as well. That's what a seminary is for. I'm going to say something, I'm going to say it very succinctly and without any apology and very clearly and, and, and with, well, as I said, with no apology. It is not possible for a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, a Christian, to graduate from a seminary. It is not possible. Because as a Christian, as a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, you believe the Word of God. And if you are, if you are a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ and you believe the Word of God, you will not make it past your first week in seminary. You will either walk out, having reproved them, and they, having rejected the Word of God, as it is written, if any, whoever, uh, a man that is an heretic, after the first and second admonition, reject, knowing that he that is such as subverted and sinneth, being condemned of himself. Okay, that's written in Titus in the third chapter. Either you will reprove them for their wickedness and walk out, or you would try really hard to believe the word of God and at the same time complete their program and they would fail you and they would kick you out. Because if you don't lie, they will not receive you. If you don't deny the Word of God and give them the answers they want according to their, to their theological nonsense instead of the Word of God, they will fail you. They will not pass you. They will not allow you to continue. They will not call you a graduate of their seminary if you believe the Word of God. They will not. You have to necessarily deny the Word of Jesus Christ in order to graduate from a seminary. That's a fact. That's an undeniable, indisputable fact. I don't care who you are. I don't care what part of the world you're in. I don't care what seminary we're talking about. They are all, 100% of them, owned and operated by the Jesuits under the headship of the Vatican in Rome. That's what a seminary is for. A seminary is like flypaper. It's, written, it's, it's there to attract those who are coming to Jesus Christ so that they can come into that death trap and be and fall for the for that old device, the same device that Satan used in the Garden of Eden, telling the woman, God knoweth that 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 that, that uh, how did he say? God knows that in the the woman said, In the day that we eat thereof, we shall surely die. Right? 
And the, and the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day that ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. Hallelujah. And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And see, that's what the woman fell for. She saw the tree that it was good for food. Let's go back there and read that again. Praise the Lord. That's awesome. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and by the way, I'm in Genesis in the third chapter, verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also to her husband with her and he did eat. And what happened? They died. Why did they die? Because God said they would die if they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. See? So the serpent lied to her. Why did he lie to her? Because she was the weaker vessel. What is the church? The church is the bride of Christ. The disciples of Jesus Christ are his church. We are his bride. Why does Satan come to us and try to tempt us? Because he can't tempt the Lord Jesus Christ. Why did the serpent come to Eve? Because he knew better than to try to come to Adam. He came to the weaker vessel. And that's what Satan does. See, just like child molesters and army recruiters prey on little children that don't know any better. See, they don't come to the adults, to the, to the parents of the children, and say, may I please rape your child, or may I please lie to your child and induct them into the military? No, they go to the children, because the children are weaker, you see? And that's how Satan operates. And so, when the Satan said this to the woman, and, and then the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, what are we seeing there? Remember what John the Apostle said in 1 John 2.15. He said, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, and these three things that he talked about, are right here. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life are not of the Father, but are of the world. You see? Let's look at what, what, what the Bible says about Eve again in Genesis 3, 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, the lust of the flesh, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, the lust of the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. This is how Satan tempted the woman in the beginning, and this is how Satan tempts the woman now. And she comes to these young disciples who are, who are just learning about the Lord Jesus Christ. And he comes to her, and he says, Would you like to learn more? You know, there's more to the Bible than what's written in the Bible. If you will study theology, you'll find out that God has secrets for you that are not written in the Bible, and that the Bible was actually not translated correctly. And if we go back to the original manuscripts, we can learn what God actually said. And your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And these young disciples who don't know any better, who are not born of the Word of God and are not being led by the Holy Ghost, they go into these seminaries thinking that they are going to be wiser than other people who profess to be Christians, who we just read the Bible and are disciples of Jesus Christ. We abide in His Word, and He abides in us. And He leads us, and we know Him, and we hear His voice. And He goes out before us, and we follow Him, and we will not follow a stranger. You see? He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. But those Wicked people who are born of that false seed, they don't have the leading of the Holy Ghost. They're not born of the Word of God. Remember, Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And if you can't see the kingdom of God, and you're blindly walking through this world trying to find the kingdom of God, but you can't see it, and the serpent comes to you and says, with all this theology, you can be so much wiser, and you can have so much knowledge, and that appeals to the pride of man, the pride of life. The pride of life. And so these people file into these seminaries and they pay the money to get a piece of paper from a seminary and they imagine in their darkened state that that piece of paper means that they have a relationship with God, that that piece of paper means that they are Christians and that that piece of paper means that they are a Christian counselor or a pastor or an apostle or a bishop simply because they paid the money and a Jesuit organization gave them their form of education and then gave them a piece of paper that says that they're ordained by that institution to be a certain thing. And then they believe that that's what they are. And they tell other people that that's what they are. And that blind, darkened woman that, that this sister wrote about who calls herself a Christian counselor doesn't know the Lord Jesus Christ, doesn't know the living God, 
All she knows is the death that she was fed by that seminary so that she can give other people that same death. And this woman's husband, who she's living in adultery with at this time, okay, until she remedies this situation, which she's in the process of doing, that man is not a Christian either. These two people, the woman's husband and the Christian counselor, are part of that broad path that leadeth to destruction. They're part of what is called the mainstream. The mainstream is the broad path that leadeth to destruction. Remember Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14? Let's go there. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Enter ye in at the straight gate. These are Jesus' words. It's written in red. Okay? Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. This is where this woman's husband and this Christian counselor are. They're on the broad way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. But straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. You see, and those of us who obey the word of God, those of us who are born of the word of God, and we read his word, we love his word, we feed on his word. We don't read his word a chapter a day because it's a religious exercise that we do because we think it makes God happy. We read his word and read his word and read his word because it is our daily bread. It is our food. It is what we live on. We, 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 we pant for it like a deer pants for water in the desert. We need it. Why do we pray? Why do we spend an hour, two hours, three hours a day in prayer? on our knees before the Lord, because He is our head, He is our God, He is our maker, He is our breath. He's the one that breathed into Adam the breath of life, and Adam became a living soul. He is where our life is. You see, we are not of this world. We're in this world, but we are not of this world. Why do we listen to worship music? Because it feeds us, because it lifts us up, because the Lord Jesus Christ inhabits the praises of His people. Because praise is... is <laughs> That's why Judah was named Judah. The name Judah means praise. Yehuda means praise. The mother of Judah said, Now will I praise the Lord. And she called him Judah. Yehuda. Judah means praise. And, and the Bible says in the Psalms, In Judah is God known. That's why we praise the Lord, because it's in us to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Why do we confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh? Because his spirit is in us. And that spirit is Antichrist who confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. See, that is the spirit of Antichrist, of whom you've heard that it should come, and is already now even in the world. You see? So we do these things because we love and know the Lord Jesus Christ. And the more we love and know the Lord Jesus Christ, the more the people in the churches, that wicked seed of Cain, is going to be angry because our works are acceptable before God and theirs are not. That's why Cain slew his brother. Remember? Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's go to 1 John in the third chapter. Not as Cain, verse 12, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew. Let's back up to verse 11. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. The beginning. Genesis. Hallelujah. Did you know that Genesis means the beginning? Praise the Lord. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. You see? So when you serve the Lord, they will hate you for his name's sake. When you serve the Lord and you do that which is right, you will be like Joseph, who was hated of his brethren. What was Joseph's crime? Nothing. He did nothing wrong. He simply obeyed his father. But his brethren hated him, and they conspired against him to kill him, and they sold him into slavery. Well, what happened with Joseph? Did God let him get destroyed? No, God raised him up to the second in charge under Pharaoh and used Joseph to save the very lives of his brethren. And those of us who know the story of Joseph, we know it's all about the Lord Jesus Christ, who was despised and rejected of men and acquainted with grief, a man of sorrows. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. You see, Jesus was rejected of men, despised and rejected of men. We hid his face from him, as it were. There was nothing in him that, that we should desire him. There was no beauty in him that we should desire him. He was a man of God who served the Lord Jesus Christ, excuse me, who served the Almighty God in heaven. And his brethren that were around him, the Jews, hated that. 
They hated it, and they gnashed their teeth, and they had meetings behind his back trying to fight and figure out how they could kill him. And they did the same thing with Paul, his disciple, and they will do the same thing with you. Yea, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And the hardest thing that I had to learn when I came to the Lord Jesus Christ, when I was just a little baby in the Lord, the hardest thing that I had to learn, this is the hardest thing that I've ever had to learn, in the Lord Jesus Christ is the fact that the persecution that will come. See, I knew persecution would come, but I didn't know where it would come from. And I had to learn this. And the hardest thing that you can learn, boys and girls, brothers and sisters, men and brethren, is that the persecution will not come from the people in the world who hate God and want nothing to do with him. The persecution will come to you from the people that profess to be Christians. These are the people that will call you a legalist because you obey the word of God. These are the people that will accuse you of all these things that this sister said that they accused her of. Listen, she said, my husband gets upset when I play worship songs at home. If her husband were a Christian, why would he possibly be upset about worship songs being played at home? Why would he not be the one to initiate the playing of worship songs at home? In my house, I play worship songs. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And you should play worship songs too. Hallelujah. And if you're a woman and, 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 and playing worship songs bothers your husband because he wants to watch the football game, then your husband is not a Christian. Because Christians have no business sitting in front of a television and watching a, a group of grown men playing a children's game. See, Christians have no business doing anything like that. In fact, Christians have no desire to do anything like that. If you have the desire to watch overgrown men play children's game, chase after a little piece of leather, and watch the filth that comes forth on the commercials during such an event, then you have not the spirit of Jesus Christ in you. And I challenge you to, 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 to examine yourself, whether you be a reprobate or whether you be in Christ. See, so this woman says, I have stopped playing worship songs when he is around. That was brought up in a counseling session, and our counselor said, quote, why do you feel you have to be sharing worship songs or asking for more prayer time or wanting to study the Bible with your husband if your own pastor doesn't do these things with his wife? Unquote. This woman, I'm not going to say that she is knowingly conspiring with this pastor to destroy this sister's soul, but because this woman is given to the spirit of darkness and she is ruled by the devil, and because this woman's pastor is also given to the spirit of darkness and is ruled by the devil, in the spirit, because of the spirit that is in them, they are conspiring together against you. Sister who wrote this letter, they are conspiring together against you. The spirits that inhabit those wicked people who profess to be Christians, that pastor and that Christian counselor, who both graduated from seminaries, maybe even the same seminary or maybe different ones. It makes no difference because they're all part of the same system and they all have the same objective to destroy the souls of people who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. They are conspiring together to destroy your soul. And any quote Christian counselor or any quote pastor or any person who would say such a thing to you is of the devil, period. Even a child is known by his doings, whether his works be pure or whether they be evil. And this person, this person actually professes to be a Christian and professes to be a Christian counselor. This, <laughs> this evil woman imagines herself to have the authority to give counsel to other people when she herself is a servant of corruption. A servant of corruption. What did Peter say about such people? In 2 Peter, it is written, for when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome of the same as he brought in bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. These people are clouds and wind without rain. They are twice dead, plucked up from the roots. They have 
come to, to, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and then they have been filed into these seminaries to learn to reject the Lord Jesus Christ and still pretend to be his and be used of Satan to be corpses, to be zombies, to pretend to be Christians, the false bride of Jesus Christ, in order to deceive other people into coming into that same death and perishing with them. And this evil woman actually imagines that she is a counselor and that she has the authority and the calling from God in her own mind to counsel other people. And this woman is, 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 is in the presence of a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ who is living with a husband who is an adulterer. Okay, This woman, this disciple that I'm speaking of that wrote me this letter, she is living in adultery with this man who is her husband. And as I said, she knows that and she's taking measures to, to remedy that right now. But this other woman who professes to be a Christian counselor not only doesn't tell this woman that she's living in adultery with this man because it's not her first husband, but also because she wants to read the Word of God, because she wants to listen to holy music in the house, because she wants more prayer time with her husband, because she wants to seek the Word of the Lord, seek God in His Word as we are commanded in His Word, and as is the desire, the fervent desire of all that are born of the Lord Jesus Christ, that we may grow in the pure milk of his word and be washed with water by the word of God and be rooted and grounded in the faith. This woman who professes to be a Christian counselor tells her, oh, no, 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 but that's not how we do it here on the broad path. No, that's not how we do it here in the mainstream. We don't obey the word of God. We don't take it literally. Oh, no, 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 no. No, it's just a book that the pastor has that he uses to quote from when he preaches his sermons about how much we need to pay for his new suit, to pay for his new, his new house, you see? You see? And to get more people into the congregation by having bake sales and, and, and garage sales and events and entertainment. See, the Bible is just something that the pastor uses to entertain the people so that we can have our organization and so that we can pretend that we know God. We don't no, we don't actually obey the Word of God. We don't actually obey the Bible. No, of course not. That's ridiculous. Come to seminary and learn about Greek and Hebrew and how that we don't have to actually obey the Word of God. All we have to do is memorize it. That's what these people actually believe and teach. Am I being a little sarcastic? You may think I am. But if you will look at these people and look at the manner of spirit that is in them and look at the things that come out of their mouth, you will see that I'm not exaggerating. And you will marvel as you grow in the Lord Jesus Christ. Those of you who are young, who are just starting the Lord Jesus Christ, who are just reading His Word, you have a King James Bible in your hand. You know that it's the Word of God. You know that those other Bibles are false. You know that the New American Standard Bible is not the Word of God. You know the NIV Bible is not the Word of God. You know all those false Bibles are not His Word. It's been borne witness by, your, by the Spirit of God to your spirit. Even if you haven't studied it, you know it. And you see all these people walking around with their NIV Bibles, quoting their, their nonsense and calling God their sky daddy and their buddy and thinking that they can live in sin and God is pleased with them, and thinking that the men can dress like women and the women can dress like men, and the women can cut off their hair and, and pray to the God pray to God without being covered, and the women can dress like men and stand in the pulpit and preach and pretend to be pastors and teachers. And they imagine that they're servants of the living God because their wicked Bibles, which are false, given to them by Satan, are telling them lies, and their wicked pastors, which are using those false Bibles to spin their lies, are also servants of Satan. And you see these things, and you might not have realized them to the extent that I'm speaking them to you plainly right now, but you know it in your spirit, don't you? If you're a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, you know it. And if you're, if you're hearing these words right now, he that hath ears to hear, you're rejoicing, your hands are going up in the air, and you're praising the Lord for the words that are coming forth from this mouth right now. Not me, I'm just a vessel, I'm just a man, born from the dust, just like you are. But the Spirit of the living God is in me, speaking these things to you. And you know these things, deep calleth unto deep. And if, you born of the, if you're born of the Word of God, then you know these things things. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And you, young sister who wrote me these things, blessed be the name of the Lord. You are on the right track. You are on the right path. And I encourage you in the name of Jesus Christ in front of the whole world right now in this video to keep doing what you're doing, to keep staying in the Word of God, to keep praying unto the living God, to keep panting for Him as, 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 as a deer pants for water in the desert, to keep desiring Him, to keep doing exactly what He says. And no matter what the world does, the Bible says, a thousand shall fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand, but it shall not come nigh me. Only with my eyes shall I behold and see the reward of the wicked. You do what God tells you to do, sister. You do what God tells you to do. 
and God will bless you. And when your enemies gather together against you, like they gathered together against our Lord Jesus Christ, like they gathered together against Joseph, like they gathered together against Paul, and like they will gather together against anyone who lives godly in Christ Jesus, God will keep you. He will deliver you. He will glorify his name in you, and he will show his mighty power in you, and he will cause your enemies to fall. He will cause their bow to fall out of their right hand and their arrows to fall out of their left hand. He will cause them to fall upon the mountains, even as he has said in his word, and he will glorify his name in you. Hallelujah. And this goes not only for you, young sister who wrote, but for all those out there who are young in the Lord, all those out there who are older in the Lord who may need this encouragement. You need to know that the false vine, the seed of Cain, is the one that will persecute you. And if they're not persecuting you, then you're not doing something right. If they're not persecuting you, then you're not walking godly in Christ Jesus. Because the Bible says that all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Not some, all. All that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. If you're not suffering persecution, if people in the, in the churches are not hating you, calling you names, speaking lies against you, trying to discourage you from the way of righteousness, if trying to knock you off the path of holiness, if they're not trying to do this, if they're not persecuting you, then you're not walking godly in Christ Jesus. That's a fact. Because all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. This is the word of God. Paul the Apostle wrote it by the Spirit of God, and it stands true. So, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Sister who wrote, and those of you out there who are in Christ Jesus, stand fast in that which thou hast, and let no man take thy crown. And you continue to do what the Lord Jesus Christ has told you to do. And whoever doesn't like it, that's their problem, not yours. That's between them and the Lord Jesus Christ. And the day will come when he will sit on his throne in Jerusalem, and you will be with him, and they will stand before his throne, and he will make them to, know, he will make them to bow before your feet. Did you know the Bible says that? He will make them to worship you at your feet, and he will make them to know that he has loved you. You see, when they mocked the Lord Jesus Christ, when he was dying for your sins and mine, they mocked him. They said, he saved others. He can't save himself. He didn't revile again. Could he have? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he could have. He's the son of God. He's the son of God. He could have said, don't you know who I am? He could have taken himself down from the cross and stood in front of them and said, don't you know who I am? With eyes like flames of fire and his countenance like lightning. But he didn't. He committed himself to him that judges righteously because he knew the joy that was set before him. He knew that the time was coming when he would sit on his throne and that those who were mocking him would be made to know their folly. And we know that as well. We don't have to win the argument right now. All we have to do is tell people the truth. And if they don't believe it, that's on them. And we move on because the day will come when the Lord Jesus Christ, our God, our King, will be seated on the throne and we will be there with him if we have suffered with him, if we have obeyed his word. And he will make them to know that he has loved us and he will make them to bow before your feet, Sister Pam. I know that's not your real name, but I'm calling you that for this video. He will make them to bow before your feet. You, brother, sister, who are out there, struggling because you're obeying God's word and the people in the churches and the pastors and the seminarians are telling you that you don't need to do that and that you're a legalist and that you're wrong and that you're trying to discourage your brother trying to cause division because you're living according to the word of God. Jesus Christ will make them to bow at your feet and to make them know that Jesus Christ has loved you. You continue in the word of God. Blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and enter in to the gates, into the city. This is what the Word of God says. Don't worry about what the pastors and the theologians tell you. They're liars. They have been cranked out from their seminaries. Nobody that comes forth from a seminary is called a God. Nobody. I say that without apology and without exception. If a man has come out of a seminary and calls himself a pastor, he is not a pastor sent from God, unless he has been called of God since then and repented from all the garbage that was taught to him in the seminary, rejected all that nonsense, rejected his doctrine of divinity, torn it up and thrown it in the fire, and began to serve the Lord Jesus Christ in spirit and in truth. See, but these pastors that are graduated from seminaries who stand in the pulpit and use their theological nonsense to spin lies and twist the word of God around and rest it, as the scripture says, because they are unlearned and unstable. You see, the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. These men are wicked and they are lying to you. Don't let them fool you. You serve God in spirit and in truth. You just read the Bible, the Holy Bible. If you speak English, the King James Bible is the Word of God. You just read what God says and you do it. 
and it's just that simple. Light is sown for the righteous. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. See, my mother and my brethren are these that hear the word of God and do it. This is what Jesus said. It's just that simple. The kingdom of God is for little children. The kingdom of God is not for theologians and scholars. The kingdom of God is for little children who believe the word of God and do what it says. It's just that simple. May this message be a blessing to those of you who love the Lord Jesus Christ and a reproof and a testimony against those of you who imagine that you were Christians when you were actually theologians instead. I have spoken what I have spoken in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the power of his spirit this day. Amen.